hit start recording. There we go. But yeah, so we were Wait. talking about um, multiple uh, projects. Yeah. Um, so the one day a week I had free was uh, was a Monday, and I was in university for fourteen hours on that day uh, because I had the I had my lectures and I had the society to run uh, from six till nine. <laughs> Uh, in the evening, and by the time I got home, it was usually about 10, 11 ish, depending on if I got them food. And uh, I found myself hit and burn out pretty early on because, oh, one of the one of the funniest moments for me when I was working on multiple projects was I was working on this organic environment, and uh, it was like a kind of Witcher esque kind of log cabin thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had another project that was a cyberpunk, like new store. And uh, I know. I was, that yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like that. cheers, man. Uh, I, I was working on an asset, and about two and a half hours into it, I was kind of like, "This isn't very fantasy." <laughs> 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 it looked more like it belonged in uh, cyberpunk than anything. I was like, "Right, I need to just focus on one one at a time." and do it that way but that was like the deadlines were fairly tight for that um and like just balancing so much mm -hmm. like every single person from industry i've spoken to uh any time i've mentioned like the seven environments or whatever i've, I've seen them start twitching yeah. so uh, i think Multiple projects are good, but it depends on the scope. Definitely. Depends on how many. Yep. And the work that needs to go into them. Because my thought process is, um, so, um, like I said, so I always do one thing normally at a time. So one project, finish it, and uh, I always make sure to get it done. So, um, like I said, so I'm making a Game of Thrones piece, and then um, I'm making another piece. Um, uh, so I'm making three pretty large environments well, well I wouldn't say pretty large I would say well they're three t yeah they're too big <laughs> uh, <laughs> put, put, put it that way so it's like three times the size of my train piece each of them so it's 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 a lot of work but the reason why I want to bring this up is because it's nice to switch things up and it's nice to change things up just so you constantly keep passion on your main project so the best thing I would do is if you're working on projects a uh, project at the moment have like a small project, so like saying, so have one save your environment hours, uh, you've got an environment project, and then on the side you have a small prop project. Yeah. So you have that thing that's testing something different, and I'm meaning like completely different. So say, say you're making a sci-fi corridor, on the side you're making um, a small tree, something that completely changes things up, and um, that's like another thing as well. So um, this is then this then tailors towards my two other questions so there's two other questions that i really want to talk about and that's foyage and design so uh, well, well, just because since we've been talking about environment for quite a bit i think we'll switch it to design so design is obviously this massive beast in the industry <laughs> and the one thing though that i'd say um you might disagree it's okay to disagree people may disagree it's okay but so many 3d artists don't know how to design and they don't have knowledge of actual like just fundamentals uh, because they've got, I, I'm not sure if it's because of the way education's been taught. So I, I so I talked to Fraser McLean. So I had a, um, literally like a legend. It was so awesome. So Fraser McLean came on the podcast, and he's literally the smartest person I've ever met. And yeah, uh, so I saw that one. Like it's it, the amount of knowledge this guy has is it's unreal. And um, excuse the pun, uh, <laughs> but um, it, it never gets old. <laughs> James's face right now, just like, oh my god, oh. how could you do this? But um, so he was telling us about how so many artists have lost the ability to be um, designers and creative and actually exploring shapes and stuff. And it, because the common trend for concept artists is that, uh, not concept artists, environment artists, is that they recreate a concept. So that's the biggest trend normally. Um, would you agree? Like you'd say, yeah. Like most people always create because it's easier to kind of make something that you see, which and it's a good hub. It's a good thing to learn for the industry. But it, the biggest mistake, though, and the biggest flaw in it is that too many people rely on someone else to always do the design. 
And if you can learn design now, or at least uh, appreciate it and understand it. So the biggest guy, uh, the biggest uh, influence I, I always go to is uh, Feng Su. So the, the master of um, silhouette, the, the, the genius of just pure uh, concept skill, design knowledge, his appreciation for silhouette and stuff. Like silhouettes, so even just if you're in environment Mars, constantly um, smashing out different silhouettes is so important because you can see how shape language actually works and uh, you appreciate form and uh, form follows function and stuff. So I know I've talked a lot about that, but what's your thoughts on 3D artists not learning uh, design? Um, I agree. Uh, quite a lot, actually. Um, I understand why so many 3D artists go towards concept because the composition's already there, the colours are already there, you've got reference exactly of where everything needs to go and like yeah. how you need to texture it and like you, you can already start mapping it out like within half an hour of looking at the at the concept image and you've got a rough plan for every single piece in that for the design elements for me i generally tend to gravitate towards architecture okay. if i'm doing a building awesome um because it's all well and good having you know this big fanciful building and and whatever in, in your piece, but if it doesn't have that sense of realism, if you're going for realism at least, the human brain can pick it up and it doesn't look quite right. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah, like um, like for example, my granddad was an architect uh, in Ipswich. Oh, nice, awesome. Um, so I've got some of his old paintings and stuff and like you can even see like I've I've got them hanging up above me but like you can even see the architecture design elements in that mm -hmm. and as I've gotten more into 3D and stuff like that like I've kind of gone more towards that element like whenever I'm making something I have to know how it works yeah. for me to be able to make it um, like for example if I was if I was given a building um, for a game or whatever first I'd be asking okay can a player go into it um, how close is it to where the player can go is like, is it a background asset or, or whatever because if it's a background asset you can just billboard it um, or just do a slightly fancy cube yep. um, if the player can go into it how do you want it broken up? Like, how do you want it to go into engine? Um, and I'd just be looking at, like, I'd be getting as much reference as possible because I'd even class, like, those first four questions as reference because mm -hmm. they determine how you're going to have to build it. Yeah. And then once you know how you're going to have to build it, then you can start looking at, okay, well, what can I find that's similar or like a similar like like for example if I was if I was doing like a uh, an early 1900s uh, environment mm -hmm. I'd be looking at how buildings were built around that time what materials were used um, where are the load supporting uh, areas of that building uh, and, and and like really like that kind of thing that's, that's um, awesome because they care because you remind, because um, the way you think is what um, everyone should be thinking. In like, you have to work from the ground up, and appreciate mm -hmm. foundation. And obviously, foundation is the key when it comes to architecture. It's the thing that makes or breaks the the design. Um, obviously, like everyone can th talk about aesthetic as much as they want, but if it doesn't, if, if it doesn't make sense, and if it, like, you said a really good point there about um, if it just you can tell when something just doesn't look right, and it. Like that's the thing that's going to make or break your piece, and yep. you. So there's one um, really great artist. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him. I hope I'm pronouncing his name. I like. I would love to have him on the podcast. His name's Gurmuk Basin. 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 Sounds familiar. So basically, what he um, what he did for many years, he was one of the main. Um, uh, so he's a he's a 3D concept artist. Um, well, he was a so he's a concept 3D artist. Um, but he his main work um, that got him noticed was Star Citizen, 
and when he was working at Star Citizen, like I would love to work in Star Citizen one day, because the way they design or like the way they make um, everything is so meticulous, and mm. so the way his his thought process is exactly like yours. So basically, what he would do is like, he went insane mode in terms of like his thought process. So basically, what he would do is he would see like um, how was like say if, um, uh, like was it injection molded? How, how was it, like how was it um, how did the uh, the rivets um, get placed in, in like is there a certain reason for uh, the size of them uh, the position of them um, that the everything to do with the texture like how um, how did how's how's it react when a um, a spaceship is in space is can anything actually get damaged like how does it get damaged um, and everything was like like you said about ergonomic so ergonomically correct uh, so is it anthropometric I think anth- I think anthropometric something like that. Um, I think so, yeah. And so, like, what you were saying about the scale, of the, like, so the the, the biggest um, one you so you said scale there, like, that's the one that a lot of people get wrong. So a lot of people forget to put the like the human in the actual scene. Like, people just model yeah. randomly, and you're, you're just, and you're like, wait, what? Like, how's how's the like like, I'll, like I'll admit early on I was a culprit of that, but it's when you, when you see people who are like finishing uni, and you're like, wait, you've like, like say if you went into their scene and it's like a door is like. 11 foot tall like the average, so the average door is six foot seven so it's like every door should be six foot seven pretty much um mm. uh, because like the cliche sort of phrase is that the average man is six foot even though that's completely wrong the average man i think is five foot six to five foot seven because obviously that takes into all the i think it's the majority from asia and stuff but it's like the typical door is based off like i think man's average of being six foot but it's like all these small things are like so important in design and the fact that so many i'm not sure if it's because um the whole sort of idea of a 3d artist is that people so i was in a twitch stream the other day and somebody um had this um it was an interesting argument well i'm not so this is an interesting subject so the person um so i think the way the person who said it in the twitch chat was a bit harsh or maybe he came across as harsh when he was asking the question but he says wait so you're making a a, a concept art uh, piece and you're not making any of it your own so and then the person who was making the art got a wee bit offended and uh, i guess i understand that um like, as in like uh maybe it's just the way the person said it but his then his, his what he then said he says oh but i'm a 3d artist and um, so i think so many artists have now de- um, so many 3d artists have so f- has somehow convinced themselves that 3d art it's just making 3D objects that have been given to you by a concept art. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like that. that's the big problem with the internet because, or just like text messages in general because someone can type something out and mean something completely different but it, it's your interpretation of how they said it. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of 3D artists go into the production artist role, yeah. which is... You give it something, you model it. Um, it's got its good and bad points. Definitely. When you get into industry, that's what you are. Um, but a lot of the time, like I know artists that have to design every single day. Yeah. Because not everything can have concept bit of artwork. Um, because from what I understand, a lot of concept artists are really only around for the first part. I could be wrong, it depends on the studio. Because a lot, um, from what I understand, a lot of concept artists are actually freelancers. Mm-hmm. Or are brought in on short-term contracts or that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, um, it's, it's tricky. Um... It's, it's, it's just I think it's the reason why I bring it up yeah. the reason why I ask it is because I just think to be an artist like I don't know like I th- so I don't know like the words like, being an artist like art art is everything person like art, art is everything like people can deny it but art is everything like the table that I'm sit- um, sitting beside right now is made the way that it is for a reason. Uh, it may not be the best uh, table. It may be the best table. You, you don't know. But everything was originally designed, and it has its function. Like function is the main thing, and then after that, obviously things can look like obviously a lot of people want things to look good and stuff. But I think it's just that the reason why I wanted to talk about it today is because I, I am 
I just want it would be great to kind of see more um, 3D artists really kind of tackling things um, design wise and uh, or at least trying to at least get like say like twenty percent of the environment in their own of that. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I think I think working from concepts fine as long as like it 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 depends on on your overall aim. Like if you wanted to do a piece. Um, that is a one-to-one representation of a concept piece, and that's your exercise. Sure, go for it. Yeah. Obviously, credit credit the concept artist uh, when you post it and stuff. But I I've found at least when when I've been talking to people that I experience like on a day-to-day basis, um, they'll find a concept piece that they like that gives them a, a good like general start and then as they go and find like reference images and stuff like that mm-hmm. they'll find ways of tying in elements from all of those different uh, reference pieces and bringing them in to make something that you can tell is clearly inspired by something but at the end of the day it's completely no mm-hmm. um, like, like for example I did that with uh, with the throne room so there's elements in that that are from real actual castles that I visited. Um, there's elements from high fantasy. There's elements from uh, gameplay video games, like uh, like specific areas and fantasy games, uh, like the lighting in particular uh, was very like I got the idea from that from. Uh, a couple of movies that I saw and a couple of video games mm-hmm. and then like all of it together created this whole new piece um, I think it's pretty cool when you see something like that come together definitely because like to me um, it's pretty much exactly what you said there so the whole sort of kind of concept of photo bashing in a way um, or at least using photo bashing do you know what I mean I actually can't photo bash. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's, it's okay if you can't, because it, it's just like I've ne- I've never actually looked in how into how to do it. Like I generally tend to, so I've got four monitors. <laughs> so like a monitor generally tends to get assigned to reference and like Google Images, and yeah. I'll just like have like a million tabs open, or I'll have pure ref open, or or whatever. Um, Usually, more often than not, it's like Google Images and then like just a hundred different tabs. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 kind of with you. It's it depends on the execution of stuff. Yeah, because for yeah. me, oh, I, I I agree. Like, but then that that obviously then brings in the question of obviously it t- practice is practice. If you know what I mean, it takes time to get to t- to get good at design. Like design and art is naturally in a a constantly evolving um, thing. It's not something that just happens overnight, and like that's why for like for example the new Game of Thrones series that I'm doing, the the next episode is all about design and photo bashing. So yeah, yeah. Um, I'm um, like the reason why I'm doing this this series is to really highlight my thought process and and highlight also the mistakes that I do as I'm doing my artwork because I think that's the thing as well is that too many people hear about all the good things. And they don't realise that there's so much bad things going on, not as in a negative way, but as in like trial and error, if you know what I mean. And trial error yeah, is yeah. things that we have to see more of. And like it's so easy for a lot of people, especially when they're doing uh, videos and tutorials. Oh, you do this, you do this, and you do that. It's it's so easy to follow to a tutorial and be like, right, um, I do this and that. But then you have to ask yourself the question: Did you actually understand it? Did you learn it? Do you have the theory behind it? Do you have a reasoning behind why that? why that decision to make it that way uh, was the right way and like these are the questions like this is the thing when it comes to learning and, and just learning overall don't get stuck in the trap of just um like copying like copying something yes if you can copy a tutorial great then that's that's awesome but if you can actually bring it to the next level and the level that you should be heading towards is actually understanding it also don't post a tutorial to your art station that you followed along and put it like if if you've done a tutorial like there's a million military radios that are exactly the same yeah I 
yeah, I know which one you're on about. Yeah, because I, because I did that for, like, I did that tutorial to teach me Maya when I was switching Max to Maya, mm -hmm. uh, and that's actually still the workflow that that I generally tend to use. But um, I saw I saw someone. I think it was, I think it was on t ten thousand hours on Facebook. Right. Someone recently posted a uh, a model. It like the post got taken down, but recently posted a model, and it was a model from a tutorial. And but the way that they worded the post implied that it was like their own. That they hadn't followed anything and and, and stuff like that. Right. Um. I've seen quite a lot of AK-47s based off of the Shampoo Zone tutorial as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of mechs, a couple of frag grenades. Admittedly, like there's there's a certain number of ways that you can change those models, but for me, I always it breaks my heart a little bit when I see someone add a military radio that is like like e even the way to render it is exactly the same as the tutorial. Yeah, and it it, it breaks my heart because it's like you could have like I appreciate the fact that you did the tutorial, but you could have done something that was a hundred percent yours. Yeah, like all you're showing through the through posting that is that you can follow along with the video. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I I, I can. Oh, I'm glad we talked about this because it's like it's scary how many people I guess. I'm not sure if it's intentional, but, well, maybe it is, but so many artists are afraid, um, especially when it comes to falling. Like, for example, do you know, like, when I, so, so I, I made the train piece. So I, uh, when I was making my train piece, I was like, right, what's my goals? What's my intentions? Obviously, I would like to make it, um, my, my goal was to capture the modeling, um, make sure the modeling was exactly as close as to the reference as possible. But I wanted to change the rendering. I wanted to kind of give mm -hmm. it a bit of a darker mood, change things up a wee bit, added a wee bit more fog, um, added a bit more so atmosphere at the bo at the back and stuff, just to add something different and add a wee bit of flair and just explore something. But if I did it, everything like s step by step, as in like obviously I, I followed it really closely, but I followed um, the concept in a way that I wanted to also like um, like I I needed to identify what I wanted to get out of it. And one of the main things for me was also not just the atmosphere, but was um, the camera and understanding how cameras actually work for film and creating like a more yeah. sort of VFX sort of approach. But because of the so many artists out, out there that like this goes back to what, what we're talking about, the design aspect. And this is when like the kind of like you have to get a balance in between the two. Like obviously if you're doing a tutorial and stuff, yes, it's great that you're learning that. However, you then fall into the trap of um, if you like you said, if you do post it, you need to then tell everyone exactly what you did, why you did it, and then most importantly, ask yourself: Did you actually get anything out of it? From the sense that, like, if you're doing something exactly step by step and you're pausing the video, then what? Like, your muscle memory is not going to develop as much because it's through those mistakes of trial and error and actually thinking about. Right, I've just watched a few minutes. Stop. Pause the video take a break and then try and think what he's just said so it actually then clicks in your head do you know what I mean yeah for me whenever I follow a tutorial I'm I'm doing it is he goes is they go through it so it's almost like it's, it's the same principle as like shadow boxing right mm -hmm. so through the act of doing it I'm getting the, that muscle memory and I'm, I'm understanding it a little bit better but like if I if I went away and I did a tutorial and I then posted it to ArtStation at the end of the day I've gotten nothing out of that yeah. apart from maybe kind of making a few people go is that really uh, like is it right it it's it's not a true representation of what you can do because it's it's technically someone else's work. Yeah, you've done it, but they've literally held your hand all the way through and, and stuff like that. If you put a different twist on it, then yeah, sure, like 
if like for example with the military radio if you put like a different um uh a different take on it so the front panel mm -hmm. with all the buttons and the dials and stuff like that if that was different or if the phone piece was different or maybe even if like uh uh words are hard the the way that you you render it is different yeah. then to me that's fine um because you can you can literally see that you know you've taken a concept or an idea but you've made it your own yeah do you know what i mean oh i completely agree and like, i'm really glad we went into depth about that because i think there's like, if, if you're listening right now and you, you've been trying to figure out what to choose, how to go about choosing a project, take the time to really think about what you want out of it. Um, most importantly, try and make it your own. Have fun with it. Explore different things. Explore the design aspects. And hopefully this podcast has really helped you gather different thoughts when it comes to the whole sort of idea of designing 3D. Um, so to finish off the podcast, uh, the one last topic I want to talk about is business. So we talked about this uh, briefly. So this is what a different. This is a. So I'm not an expert in the business side of things, um, but it's great to kind of, um, I guess, just hear like what your thoughts on treating yourself as a business person. If you know what I mean, as in like so. To me, um, the there's this kind of. Um, so I talked about it with Tim on uh, Tim's uh, on the podcast with Tim Simpson, and basically what we talked about was artists should never undersell themselves so artists like we're all worth something like we should be getting paid for what we do and this is when you have to kind of develop a mindset so if you're in your fourth year of university kind of get in the habit of realizing right this is a profession this isn't just for fun this is an actual job i need to live so when it comes to education is there anything that you think kind of stands out to you when it comes to maybe that would be kind of good to kind of learn to kind of feel more business-like or feel more ready in that sort of sense so I, I don't think I was the average student because I came from an industry where it was important to sell yourself anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a hairdresser. Yeah, I remember you saying awesome. Yeah, so I had clients that would follow me around to whatever salon I was working out and uh, they specifically came to get the hair cut by me, not anyone else, it was, it was specifically me. And I had to learn very early on how to get clients and how to keep them and that kind of business mentality. Um, like already, like after just graduating uni, I'm already kind of thinking, okay, how can I help other people? Mm -hmm. Like alongside whatever so um probably in about a year's time i'm probably going to set up patreon and do some mentoring and, and stuff like that like after i've got a bit more experience under my belt but um like i think being active on social media um treating people as people <laughs> Yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah. Like, completely agree. I I fell into the trap where I got starstruck by people from industry. I was like, oh, holy shit, he works on games. Like, you know, this dude is is nuts and, and all that. But like, at the end of the day, everyone's a person, and if you, I I personally think that if someone Right, say I'm at Eurogamer, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm in the career section, at whatever studio I'm working at, and I've got you know dozens and dozens and dozens of portfolios to go through, and like I'm giving advice and talking to all these hundreds of people. The people that are going to stick out in my mind, to me, for the most part, for me to like go back and speak to them again, is, are the people that treat me as a human mm -hmm. um, and not like a bit like an advice vendor machine yeah. <laughs> if that makes sense oh, yeah. um, 
because I've 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 done days where I've spoken to like thousands of people easy so I ran the game dev society in my final year of uni mm -hmm. and then the welcome week we had like a, a freshers fair okay where all the students could go around and speak to the committees not the people that, that run the, each individual society uh, and then like we would try and sell a membership to them and, and that kind of thing so in the last one that I did I must have spoken to at least a thousand people because I think it was like three or four thousand people went through that sports hall that day Yeah. between I think it was like 11 and 3 mm -hmm. uh, so and like the people that that jump out at me like when I think about it are the people that were polite were kind and you know understood that I was talking to so many people and faces were kind of blowing together and I can't remember like what I'd said to certain people and, and, and stuff like that um, particularly like towards the end of the day when I was starting to lose my voice as well um, but it's 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 that kind of thing where it's the people that treat you as as a human. Yeah, the small the small uh, things are actually the bigger things. It's yeah, like 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 for example, you worked on a till as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Guarantee that the that your favourite customers were the ones that were the polite ones, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, trust me. Oh, oh. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the evil ones, like oh gosh, there's, 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 there's the one thing that I've never understood is how a person blames something on you that's not your fault. Yeah, um, that's the one thing I don't get. Some people like there's there's a few people that I came across that were very um, oh I, um this is faulty. How dare you? I'm like, I said it wasn't my fault. <laughs> okay, I, I need I nearly left the counter at a couple of them. Like um, so I worked at the co-op while I was at uni, and I did not get paid for the abuse that I got. <laughs> like I like there were a couple of times where I even had people waiting for me after I finished work because I refuse to sell them booze or something like that and um, which is just pathetic but like it's either the really 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 bad ones that stick out in your mind or it's yeah. like the really really good ones yeah like even if it's just as little as you know oh, how's your day going yeah. or something like that it goes a long way yeah, yeah, yeah like every single like industry speaker that we ever had in for the society and for the university like they always included the line don't be a dick <laughs> <laughs> nice and simple eh? straight to the yeah, point yeah. That's... <laughs> I'll just I'll just copy copy and paste that right to the end of the podcast we'll use that for the final intro <laughs> but <it's> slogan because <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> like in the grand scheme of things the games industry is really small yeah like in comparison to other industries like it's not a wild stretch for someone to know yeah. someone in like a dozen or more studios mm -hmm. and triple a is even smaller so if you go into a triple a studio and you know you're an asshole <laughs> and, um, that's probably gonna like when the next studio comes to hire you or you try and move or, or whatever if they find out that you're difficult to work with, the domino effect. Yeah, it's yeah, but I, I, it, it it's kind of the same for like having that business mindset as well. Like yeah. you've got to you've got to be approachable, period. Because otherwise, like no one's gonna gonna want to follow you. No one's gonna want to keep up to date with you. All of that. Um, I'd say being too intense as well mm -hmm. or like being passionate is cool and like it's really inspiring but there comes a point where it's overpowering yeah and that can put someone off just as much as you know being an asshole to them <laughs> but um you've just made me remember it, two really good points <laughs> oh, go on. sorry to go get on. you off um sorry? so there's two things um so uh, one thing I want to say about following, and then there's another one I want to say about intense. So um, the one thing that 
I get very confused about a lot of artists is when, say you followed an artist, right? And mm. um, say they follow you back and then you decide not to follow them anymore just because maybe they're not posting or anything. Um, so I think a lot of people get carried away about the, 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 the whole idea of following um, too much. And yeah. that then has, they then judge you based off that. So there's been a few instances where I've followed people um, and, um, or they've, um, how can I say it? So um, I've followed people and then I've decided to not follow them just because they never use the social media anymore. And then out of nowhere, they've unfollowed me, then followed me just to get the notification. And I've been like, wait, what? <laughs> and uh, it's, it's, yeah. it's very strange. And like the other one I want to say is about um, covering your point about uh, the, like for example, intensity or, or coming across as too much. So I wanted, to t- so I, I want you to be really honest with me here, right? And, I, I, and so this is this is why I did it, and uh, I, I I expect that this answer. To, so I'm okay with it because there's a reason why I did it. So as of late on Twitter, I've been spamming quite a lot. Well, not I was, I'm not sure if the words are spam. You can address it as a spam, but I do quite a lot of tweets. Yeah, like you'll you probably yeah. agree. So I do quite a lot of tweets and it, the tweets based around the podcast and stuff so if i have say for example say i have uh, three guests on the podcast in one week so that's three tweets minimum um mm. and then say later so say it, say i post it at 9 a.m in the morning and then later on in the day i then retweet it so you have the option to retweet so that's yeah. six tweets of tweets you guys are going to get about the podcast and the reason why i wanted to bring this up is because a lot of people I have to realize the balance. So this is what I talked in my last podcast. So I did a podcast purely about social media and there comes a point that you have to realize what your audience is wanting. And this thing tells back to our important discussion, which is the business thing. So you have to realize that you want to keep a hold of these contacts and not lose them. So I tested out how, so this is what I did. So that people, I wonder what people are thoughts were. So I literally um, pretty much said three variations of the same quote, right? For a whole week. And I kept spamming it because I wanted to see what people's reaction. I remember was. that. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, right, what's people's reaction? And I wanted to see how many people would get frustrated, and how many people were going to um, uh, be uh, be interactive. If you know what I mean. So I so I, I can I can see just through the testing what kind of people, what kind of tweets people liked, and I did this to experiment. And the reason why I want to bring this point up is because. There's been a few artists that have reached out to me um, early on, which uh, I really appreciate them reaching out to me. But they have reached out to me so much now. Like I am, I'd be getting like multiple, like an essay, like, no joke, like multiple messages a day from the same person for like two months, and it's like <laughs> it, it it adds up. You know what I mean? You get you slowly kind of. Um, obviously, I've always been respectful, and I, I I really care about helping everyone. But it does come a point that when you um. Are like pestering too much it can be a bit frustrating for some people yeah um like it's a, i it's, mean it's an interesting subject but the reason why i want to talk about it is because it relates to that sort of idea of how to approach people and, and how to keep a good, yeah. sort of a good relationship with someone yeah i think the problem with social media well first off i'm a lurker so like I don't post much. <laughs> I tend to just kind of scroll through the newsfeed and stuff. Like I, I noticed the the three different variations of the quote, and I was like, oh, "I'll see what you're doing." <laughs> 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 well, I wanted um, to test it out because I generally wanted yeah. to see what's good, what people's reaction was, and it worked. I learned from it, and I was like, "I'll never do that again," but I've learned from it. Yeah. Um. I mean, for me personally, I I I love how much you you tweet and stuff and how much you retweet your stuff because like it always reminds me to go back and you know watch something or r- remind myself that i need to watch that one or, or yeah. whatever um because so much goes on in personal lives and stuff that like it's impossible to keep track of everything yeah i think that's that's the big problem with social media is if you send a text message or a dm or or whatever to someone you expect to reply almost instantaneously yeah um i i have a really nasty habit where i'll i'll send a text and it'll be like two lines long or something like that um in fact i think i've done this with you on on linkedin a couple of times okay but i'll send a message and then i'll be like oh wait i forgot to add this 
<laughs> and then, like, so without me realizing, I've sent them like two notifications. And yeah. no, I'm okay with that. that that's it's, it's know, okay. Cause, I, like... I, I personally get paranoid about that because I'm like, because like sometimes I'll remember like five or six different things, yeah. and I'm like, oh shit, because <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just looking at it and it just looks like I'm I'm just going like hi 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 or whatever, yeah. uh, just like poking them until they respond. But um, it's it's the it, it's it's just a problem with social media as a whole and like people's general outlook on it is. Everyone wants like instant gratification on yeah. like everything, and it's it's not just like limited to to social media as well. It's it's with relationships, with uh, life in general, with careers. Like everyone wants everything like now, 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 now. Like there's no like there's no patience or anything like that. Like I consider myself a fairly patient person, um, dependent on the situation. <laughs> um, like for example. I'm a ball of anxiety whenever I've applied for a job. So, I, like, I'm just there, like, oh, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. <laughs> or, or, like, uh, my most recent one is I spotted a car I really like, and I'm like, oh, I really want it. <laughs> and I'm, but I know that if I get a new car, I've got to wait, like, a year. So it's like... Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, um, do you like you said yours is cars? I'm not sure if I, if I said. I'm not sure if it's no. It's a friend. I said my thing. My thing at the moment is suits. So I love suits. So I, I, yeah, that's my thing at the moment. Um, it's weird because I went to I went to graduation in a three piece suit, and it was so uncomfortable. <laughs> um, I love rocking like, a suit like, or a good sh- a good sh- like. Like a shirt and tie, like uh, oh, I don't, I don't know. I just feel like alive. I don't know. See, shirt, shirts are tricky for me because I've got a thick neck, so right, okay. I can't really ever do my top button up. Yeah. Um, I mean, like as I'm saying, talking to you, I've got holes in my t-shirt. <laughs> just ripping everything. <laughs> well, yeah, like like half half my wardrobe is just shredded clothes. Yeah. Um, like I'm a six foot two guy, yeah. and I'm still dressing like a rejected skater boy and uh like for me my thing is cars like how you've got suits i like cars um so like the the particular car that i've been looking at is a nissan 370z okay and i'm like "Mm." and i found it on auto trader and it was nice and cheap i'm like "Mm, in a year baby in a year (laughs) um (laughs) but like Again, it's it, it's the thing with the instant gratification, and I know that I've got to wait. And it's the same with like messaging someone on, on on social media, like from industry. They've got their own shit going on. Mm-hmm. Like they've got their own lives. That you know, they might have partners or whatever, or they might be at work or you know, all of that. Nine times out of ten, they will respond, and they will be like nice and helpful, and because like everyone wants to see everyone succeed, right? course yeah um but if you if you keep on like the worst one i've ever seen is Ooh, drum roll. it was a it was a screenshot from someone on twitter i can't remember who it was but well i like, wouldn't say you, any names i'd be careful <laughs> yeah no, no 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 it was um it was a student that was trying to get advice for some work mm-hmm. and it was um but it took it it did a 180 so quickly. So like, this this was a screenshot that was um that we shared on Twitter just as like we just tagline of "Don't be this guy" or something like that. Yeah. And they were having a conversation. It was fine. It was you know whatever. And then uh the guy or girl or whatever um sent like six or seven messages within like two minutes and was like and then like i think the final one was why are you not replying yeah and then it, it like it just turned hostile and it's like don't be that guy man like and the person was like they'd literally just been typing out a response in those two minutes mm-hmm. like you're not owed the time 
from anyone in industry. You're not owed the time of anyone to reply to you, really. Exactly. Like, at the end of the day, it's no. It should be no different than having a conversation. Like, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here with you and be like, "Why are you not replying to me?" Hmm? Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> like, because <laughs> uh, you. So you remind me of a, a situation. Um, so th so this is the only time I think this situation. So well, it, so you might. Um, so uh, you might argue. So it's okay. But uh, so basically, um, so one of my good friends. So I'm uh, being talking to one of my good friends about. Um, something very specific for the uh, for the podcast that I can't wait to hopefully announce and um, basically I sent a message and he, and he was he was really helping me out and I'm, I'm so glad he's, he's such a great friend and um, he was helping me out with things and then um, he um, then he, he stopped he, he stopped kind of um, he didn't get back to me after like a, like a week or so and um, mm. I, I needed I, I wasn't trying to be selfish but I like I needed the information quite soon in order for yeah. me to, in order for me to get the thing that I needed to get done, and then um, obviously I was incredibly grateful for what he did, but um, so then I sent him another message. So I sent him a message yesterday, and um, um, so obviously when I sent the message, I was like, "Hi man, sorry, I'm not trying to be a pain. Um, I was just I needed to realise uh, what your thoughts are on the situation stuff, just to kind of get me in the right direction, just so I could actually finish that. So if you're in the yeah. case similar to that, then you have to kind of think about how to word it. Going back to the whole idea of wording really think about being smart so like you said i i get so frustrated when like i'm a very patient person like no joke i'm I, it's so hard to kind of get me rattled um yeah but it's uh but when yeah like if you get like 50 messages on linkedin like boom 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 you're like whoa <laughs> that's a lot of messages but with everything yeah you I'm, get whiplash from it <laughs> oh exactly man but with all that said today people um, there's so much great information, so I'm going to divide this podcast into two because it's been an epic podcast, and there's so much great content that you've had the chance to hopefully learn from and grow, uh, grow as an artist. Once again, make sure to go uh, give them a follow, check out social media, all links will be in the description below, and um, as always, if you're new to the podcast, make sure to subscribe, we've just passed 2,000 subscribers, baby, oh yeah, we're growing, hey. we're, we're growing, man, we're getting up there, so the, the, the race to 3,000 subscribers goes. So if you're new, please subscribe. It'll be super appreciated. And if you don't want to subscribe, it's okay. That's not a problem at all. It's uh, Do your thing and uh, leave a like if you enjoyed today's episodes. Um, like I said, episodes, because it's been amazing having you on the show, man. Thanks once again for coming back on. And, sure. you know, you're always welcome to come on again. Um, <laughs> and as always, folks, we will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for listening, and we will see you guys later.